Okay, um, good evening. How are you feeling? Um, I'm the guy with the awful slides and the improvised talk this evening, so that's what I will be playing tonight. Um, my talk is called That's Not What I Meant About Empathy in Our Work and How to Gain to Get to Happier Projects Through Better Communication. Um, an alternative title could be Things I'm Trying to Do to Suck Less as a Colleague and Human Being. Um, unactionable Mindset Advice and Bite Side Tips. Well, um, I'm a freelance user experience design and project manager, which means usually I work on projects where I am both responsible for the specification and the concept, as well as being the guy who has to talk to everybody and convince them to do their job. Um, this is how you will reach me if you have questions, because we all have a lot of questions, so many questions, in fact. In fact, I would say that launching a digital product is mainly about finding answers to questions. A lot of questions. But mainly there are things like, what do we want to do? How, we will, how will we ever do this? And why, anyway, like, why are we doing this like this? Which roughly translates to things that I would say, what is the project scope? How is the plan? And why is the vision of the project? Like, what do we want to achieve in the end? About the scope or what we want to build, I don't think that complexity is the problem. Usually people would say complexity, it, and this is too complex. We need to simplify, we need to make it easier. This is way too huge, let's chunk it down. I don't think that is necessarily the case. I think confusion is the problem. But if confusion is the problem, how do we achieve clarity? Because I would say that's the opposite of confusion. and. I think it helps to stay consistent, to minimize things left unclear, and making the unclear less threatening. Um, you'll notice that I, d I don't think that like, clarity is this fantastical vision that you can achieve where everything suddenly is clarified, you know what to do with everything and every single task is written down because that's never the case, uh, especially if you work with a lot of people in a team. That's unachievable. What's important is that what is there is not too much <laughs> and that it's not threatening to anyone. So how do you actually stay consistent? Um, I, I think the first and foremost thing is to be reliable. Um, especially because any time we communicate and we say something that I will do this um, or I don't think this should be done that way, usually we have already formed a sort of commitment in our minds or in other people's minds. That's usually when um, at the end of a project, when the launch comes and somebody says, what, why isn't this done? I thought you wanted to do that. Um, I think it helps to clarify it by sticking to one meaning. Like, Whenever we realize that we are using words for different things or that we are vaguely talking about things that might sound familiar and similar but really aren't the same thing, we are obfuscating what we are really talking about. Which is why I strongly advocate to use a common language. It's very difficult, um, especially because developers usually will have their own language for how they call things. And as you know, naming things is probably the hardest problem in information technology. Designers will call it a different way. Um, 
the project manager <laughs> another third way and probably the client or boss a fourth way. Um, if you can manage to reduce that, um, you will have huge gains because every time you talk with a colleague from a different branch, so to speak, um, there will always be some translation friction going on there. So something that I think is very important is to stick to a certain kind of language. If you use a word, think about which ones you use and stick to them and try to have them in the whole team. Um, also make everything as obvious as possible. Um, there are different ways to do this. One is obviously to make it visible. For instance, a Kanban board or um, by, yeah, or by showing <laughs> how many tasks are open. But also a prototype is the typical way to make something more obvious. If I talk about an idea as a user experience designer, it obviously helps if I make a quick sketch. Um, it might help to refine it into a wireframe or even a working prototype, but try to make everything as obvious as possible. And I think wireframes are a fantastic way <laughs> um, to screw things up if you put things in that you aren't sure about or where you don't know, well, this is kind of placeholder. Because if you show something and some parts are final and some parts aren't, or there are mistakes, some things are wrong, some things aren't, you leave it to the other person to figure it out for themselves, which obviously will lead to misunderstandings. If you try to make it as clear as possible with no double meanings wherever you can, that will help in staying consistent. Also, be ruthless when changing things. Um, changes are unavoidable. It's like death in Texas. In any project, <laughs> there will be changes to the specification and to the scope, um, which is why everybody praises Agile, because it says, well, change is inevitable, and we deal with it. But the problem is every project changes things, and as you change things, the old versions kind of stick around. People will talk about things in a way that was correct before, or they haven't, ha haven't heard about it. And um, it's um, a very quick process how quickly like documentation or code rottens as soon as changes aren't like consistent throughout. Like if you decide on changing a name or changing a specification, try to change it everywhere. Don't leave anything outdated. Exactly. <laughs> Remove outdated information wherever you can. It cannot possibly help. Um, and, and repeat, 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 just as I did right now. Because um, even if you know in a way what is true, it certainly helps to hear it another way in a different way because it helps the message, so to speak. The other one is to minimize what's unclear. And I think the main focus should be here to clarify expectations and intent. Are we talking about the same thing? If I say I'm going to build a prototype, what what is it that you have in your mind? Um, so what are we doing exactly? And especially, what are we not doing? Um, it usually also helps to clarify it down by sizing it down to a level of where it can be unmistakable. If you like the stup uh, and to make a stupid um, kind of example, if you say we need a landing page for this and this, 
there's a lot that can go wrong and you obviously try to break it down but people will stop at a certain level at what point do you actually stop breaking tasks down well the point where you stop is where you reach a common understanding where when somebody sees the task in the team they n know what it's about if you don't know that break it down further or try to talk about it also this is a continuous process um, are we talking about the, the same thing when you say X do you mean what I call epsilon also if you realize that somebody has a different understanding of something than you um, it helps to try to find analogies um, usually people learn by analogies if you see something that is unknown to you you always try to relate it to what you already know so <laughs> this is a typical mistake we tend to make as experts in our field that we use the language that is common to our domain <coughs> expertise and people won't understand what we are talking about it's very easy to start saying something like the mental model of the user or um, <laughs> right exactly words like those which people probably won't say that they didn't understand um, because nobody wants to sound like a fool but it always helps to try to find analogies that are more common to the language the others speak also write down what is agreed upon like if you had a phone call if you had a chat and you decided about something always write it down this is admittedly kind of a cover your ass mentality but it also helps because you don't know whether you understood correctly if you write it down you give the other person a chance to check and say yes I agree that's what we want to do and especially if you work for a long time on something you keep a track record on at this time we decided this um, something that for instance I do um, is build a project log just like um, software projects have a change log like with this version and this release we changed this I would say okay on this day we decide this which changed for instance the scope on this one um, also when in doubt try to remove obviously yes um, keep it simple stupid because the less there is the bigger the chances are that you removed something unclear also always keep nagging um, if you aren't sure about something always ask because probably you will uncover some a lot of hand waving around certain topics and it always helps to ask why so why 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 because in the end you will reach a higher understanding of the entire project and the priorities of the people involved and that will usually clarify a lot the third thing would be to make the unclear less threatening and by that obviously I mean not everything that is unclear is a problem um, there are a lot of things that can be unclear especially in the beginning um, nobody will care it won't mess with anyone's mind state but there are things where people will worry um, because they are unclear we fear the unknown more than we fear things that we know will go bad <laughs> which usually means try to assess risks always like this is obviously a project managers job mainly but it helps if everybody tries to do that because um, you as a professional have a certain understanding of the topic that others won't in the project so it's your du duty as well to 
raise your hand and say, I see a risk when we do this. Or until we clarify that, we will have a possible problem. Also, what is important? Um, Every person on the project has different priorities, different things that they deem important. Um, for instance, <laughs> this kind of detail, but every project is basically constrained by time, budget, and money. Um, time, budget, and money, yeah. Time, budget, and scope. And you will find that every client and every person ha skews to a certain way. Like, for instance, I'm skewed towards scope. Um, I think quality is very important, which means that I'm more willing to compromise on the timeline and the budget than on the quality. Other people will have a very strict timeline and will be forced to make time the most important thing. Yes, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I guess. So try to clarify what is important to different people, because if you don't know what is important to them, um, it's basically pre-programmed that there will be some kind of misunderstanding afterwards. <laughs> also try to clarify what is most unclear to you. Um, usually the thing that is most unclear to people is also one of the things that worries them the most. Um, when somebody actually voices a concern and you don't understand the concern or think, well, yeah, I can get it, but it's not really a problem, try to ask them what they actually fear might happen um, so that you can show that you understand the problem, actually. Like, I fear that if we don't decide on the typeface by Thursday, we won't be able to launch in three months. And say, okay, why do you fear that? Um, obviously, give updates. This is this a bit about push and pull information. Like if you find somebody that continuously has to pull the information they need, like they have to ask you what is going on, check that and try to make it a push from your side. But be concise. Don't overwhelm people. We all get way too much email. And try to find the perfect format for everybody where you push information and are concise about it. Also trust others and show it actively. Like people won't know that you really trust them if you don't show it. Like um, and the example I want to make is a bit too personal but Well, I, I actually, I'm a bit suspicious b because, as I said, the talk is a bit improvised and I like everybody's like, mm -hmm, this shit. so I can get that. So, But no, I, I kind of trust you guys. Nobody has shot me yet, so that has to be count for something. Um, and another thing is to design and develop in the open. Um, that is a pet peeve of mine. People who like because I used to be one of those um, persons who don't want to show their progress. Like if you don't, if you're not willing to show your work in progress, really try to get your self-esteem up and the trust in yourself, in your professionalism, that you know what you're doing, that you're able to show work in progress. Because uh, it helps in so many ways. First, you get feedback faster. Um, you show that you know what you're doing. Um, people see that there is actually stuff going on. There are so many advantages to this. And also explain your doubts and encourage others to do so. Um, for instance, if you, it's very easy to like, as a designer, for instance, to build a first design and just ask, what do you think? Um, why why not like say okay um i'll explain to you what i thought about this and i feel pretty confident about this solution but i'm not so sure about this one what do you think so in the end 
how should I say, put this, try to be a beacon of clarity because um, I think Crockford said <laughs> this, um, the JavaScript guru, um, that software projects are basically the most complex things that humans make. <laughs> and it's a very difficult thing to attain a level of clarity of what we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. If you can reach that, help others achieve it. Um, because there's so many things that where clarity helps. Velocity of execution, um, exactly quality, and so on and so forth. In other words, clarity is actually um, both for quality execution and peace of mind, I think the most important thing. About how and why, um, I think that disagreement is not a problem because we will always disagree about certain things, but misunderstanding can be a huge problem. Which would formulate to how do we achieve a shared understanding? Um, here would suggest four things. Um, empathize, involve, clarify values, and reframe meaning. To empathize, well, there are a lot of things that you can do, but basically it's a mindset of being available for others, trying to understand what they're doing, what they're thinking. Also, show your own doubts, explain how you feel. Don't be a dick about it. Don't be angry. Um, actively try to understand other people's difficulties. Um, be human and always look on the bright side of life. Not in the sense that you should be like the cheery, like, yay! <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to work on this project? Um, but to, ha to have a certain sense of humor about it. Like, in the end, what are we doing? It's probably not that important in the course of <laughs> human nature, right? So everything that seems so terrible, like, I don't know, the server crashed and um, it's launch day and Apple hasn't finished the review. Um, sorry. <laughs> Wherever you were. Um, stuff like that. Yes, it's all very important and we take our work very seriously, but <coughs> keep a sense of humor about it and don't underestimate the struggle um, because what may, might seem easy to you um, most certainly isn't for others and the other way around. There's a very beautiful Kafka quote which uh, I just remembered and forgot to put in but <laughs> it goes something like um, if I talk to you and talk to you about all my pain and I fall down on my knees and start to cry, how much more would you know how it is to feel my pain as you would know about hell when they tell you that it's terrible and dark and full of fire? So for that reason, we should stand in front of other people like we would stand in front of the gates of hell with the utmost respect. You don't know what is happening in there. Well, that was dramatic. <laughs> involve. Um, involve. Th this, this is actually a big one, like clarify who the stakeholders are. This is something that happens way too often in a lot of projects where you have an external client, for instance, and you know one person there. The rest of the organization is kind of black box. And everything goes swimmingly well with the client and everything is approved and suddenly the client calls and says, damn it, um, we've, we've got to change this and this and this and um, it shouldn't be yellow, whatever. And it turns out that the stakeholder, the client, didn't have the power to decide all these things. So you went on explaining things to this client and the client says, yeah, it's great, I love it, um, let's keep going this way. And suddenly it turns out that guy has a boss um, and that girl has a, a CEO who is a total dick and doesn't know about design. And you didn't know about that. 
but they are stakeholders in the project which you have ignored. You didn't know they existed even. So that is an extreme example, obviously, but always try to understand who is involved in the project and what is at stake for them. What is it that they, like what is their expertise and why are they involved in this project? Why should they be kept updated or why do they even get to decide about certain things? Um, ask for specific feedback. This, this is a big one. I tend to do this also way too often that I just send stuff off and say, what do you think? Like, do you like it even? Um, it's way better, in my opinion, to ask for specific feedback. Like, what do you think about this? And maybe even explain why you care about uh, their opinion. Um, give options and explain what is good about the one option and the other option. You are the expert, you have to explain. If you don't give options, um, try building a flying duck in. Um, <laughs> this is something I've tried to find it again where it was. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? This is, yeah, exactly. So basically the story goes like this, that there was this game designer who was working on a 3D battle chess game. And this person was doing amazing work. Um, and everything this person did went through with management, while another colleague had trouble getting anything that they had designed through upper management. So at a certain point, this person asks the other designer, how, how do you get upper management to approve everything you do? And he gave an example that, for instance, when this person did the animation for the queen, it's a kind of 3D battle chess, so you must imagine like the, the figures swoop in and then they hack each other to death or whatever. Um, for instance, he made the queen and the animation was perfect. And then he added a flying duck that was flying around the queen all the time. And he showed it to upper management and they said, okay, that's fantastic, but the duck has to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, this is kind of, I don't know, nasty, but it's something that I also do. Like, if you feel very confident about something that it should be done that way, you don't have options to discuss show that one option but have something in your backhand that you can willingly sacrifice. Maybe m make it even kind of obvious that that can be sacrificed so that people who have to decide, they get something <laughs> that they can decide on. Also, just chat about other stuff. If It's amazing how many things I've discovered sometimes about things that weren't going well with the project, or even like fantastic I ideas how we could improve some things just by starting to talk about other things. Um, clarify values, and I think I'm almost done, thank God. Yeah. Um, values, like there are a lot of things that you can ask, either kind of directly, like what is important to you um, in this project? When do you feel happy about this? <laughs> like, what is it that makes you unhappy? Like, uh, what guides your decisions in this? Obviously, you wouldn't formulate it quite this way, but you get the point, I guess. Um, and when your values are in conflict, which one will win? The last one is uh, reframing meaning. And... Um, Reframing, if basically like the frame is something that you set, um, it's, it's the meaning given, it's the interpretation of a certain situation, which means that whoever gets to decide the frame of a situation usually wins <laughs> with the interpretation, and 
you can try to reframe things. Like if somebody comes to you and says, well, um, you said, uh, we had decided that we want to put a really huge background image carousel and you don't think that's a good idea. Maybe you could talk about, yes, um, I still think that's a fantastic idea, but um, it will make the website really heavy. It will be 10 megabytes. Um, and that will make it really slow for certain users, for instance. And also just use the Socratic method, like, hmm, you know what I'm talking about. Wouldn't you agree with, like, if this is uh, what you think, does that imply that? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, those were just spitballing a few things. Um, but I think it comes down to this, that if you complain about clients or colleagues who just don't get it, they don't have a clue, um, you are being disrespectful of your own expertise. Of course they don't get it, that's why they hired you, right? So if you rant about other people's lack of understanding for what you do, um, look yourself in the mirror, it's your fault because you should explain and educate people about what you do, why what you're doing is good and the right decision. So I'll leave you with that. Um, in the end, it's just about trying not to be a dick, as Kant would say. <laughs> and um, thank you for having me. Um, it was a bit of improvised thanks to Max, who asked me to do this. Um, thank you. the input as well, like this was unstructured. Yes? I just have some, like, it's an interesting talk, but also there's some comments, because there's also like the flip side, so mm -hmm. um, it's all like this uh, designers and product developers saying, oh, the client doesn't do this, so we have to educate them, blah, 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 but they are probably equally sat in some other conference, uh, conference talk in Berlin doing that. Same thing to, to them, saying, oh, and these software development guys, they want to make it look really nice, but they don't understand the business objectives. So I think it's just uh, super important to, to not only be open to educate, but also mm -hmm. to be open to be educated. Because I think a lot of the time, uh, people are way more open to educate other people than they are to be educated. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the client has a very good reason why uh, they don't want it to be yellow, for your example. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think that that's something that we should all try and be aware of. Um, and then it would be interesting to know your thoughts about well, how, to, how to do this and how to try and understand. Well, um, I certainly agree. And um, some of the things that I mentioned were um, trying to understand what is important to other people. Um, because once you find out what's important for other people, you have found something that they will really want to talk about and they will explain everything to you. Also, just the easiest way to make people explain stuff is to be interested. Like, genu like It sounds stupid, but it's really that simple. If you're genuinely interested and ask is there something, did I leave you porn on? No. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay, thank you. And in the end, people will explain everything to you as soon as you're interested. Like the easiest way is to ask. But as I said, also like try to find commonalities by finding analogies. Like, oh, so what you're doing there is basically like, I don't know, for instance, something that a designer would do like, oh, that's like refactoring or mm -hmm, or if you make those assumptions, it's like test driven development. So yeah, 
try try to be genuinely interested in other people and they will explain a lot to you i think okay some other remarks like what do you do how do you uh, approach uh, standardization of language the what ah standardization of language uh, excellent question um well there in a project there are usually it's very fast that terms crop up, right? Like for instance, um, do we call it login or sign up? Um, <laughs> or is it the profile screen? Is it the user details screen? Is it the account management screen? And so on and so forth. Um, usually, it there needs to be someone who is a guardian of that, who is really aware of when those things crop up and tries to standardize it. Um, I actually like build glossaries, like when I write a specification, I put a glossary in front where I try to define the words we use for this project, like so that you won't end up in a project where people one one person says it's a task the other one it's an exercise the other one it's a workout um so a glossary will help and especially like there needs to be someone who cares about it um and keeps that up to date like if you have a wiki that's a very good place usually the problem there is that Wikis are something that developers and maybe designers will use, but not necessarily like project managers or clients. Um, but yeah, it's like the most important thing is that you also stay consistent because as soon as other people try naming things differently, you will fall into a pattern where you start yourself being ambiguous about what things are called. And... Um, that will spread. So build a glossary and try to be consistent about the use of your language. I think that's the only examples I can give. But yeah. It's one of those things like when you hear something on the TV for the first time and suddenly it's everywhere because suddenly you notice it all the time as soon as you realize how important it is that language should be kind of standardized and you should use the same words for the same things, that there's a real value in that, you will start to notice it pretty fast. Like, as a designer, you will s suddenly recognize your own inconsistencies. As a developer, you will find, oh, well, I've named this view controller something completely different from how everybody else is naming this. So, yeah, you'll become aware of that, and by that you will try to keep it more synchronized, I think. Um, do you find the um, clients in Berlin actively searching for project managers, <coughs> or hoping that designers and coders they would hire or would be self-organized? I don't quite get the question. Sorry. Sure. Uh, just as firms and small firms <coughs> are looking for designers, mm -hmm. and are looking for yeah. developers, and are looking for management, are they looking for project managers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they? Do you like the clients you work with? Okay. Oh well. Um, mm. <laughs> Is there a priority to hire an individual to focus on that from your experience? Um, usually that is not what is lacking in a startup, for instance, or for some clients, because um, they will have somebody on board who thinks they are qualified to do the project management. <laughs> um, the power of language again. But um, yeah, sometimes it's, in my opinion, or in my experience, it's something similar to something like user experience design or differentiating between front-end and back-end um, or between 
architecture and mm -hmm. and some some clients do have the understanding of what that entails and some won't but projects there is always a form of project management because as soon as there are people working together there will be some sort of trying attempt at managing it so uh, people I don't know they find out about Trello and they say let's all go on Trello and put cards on there and like project management can be emergent like for instance I became a project manager by happy accident um, because I had to manage projects, right? And at a certain point, I learned that there are people actually doing this professionally and that you can learn from them because they have certain methods of doing things that make sense. Um, but yeah, I know clients who search for project managers, but I've also seen plenty of startups, especially who don't have that and it usually shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I think that was a great way to end this unless somebody has a great <laughs> remark. <laughs> what? Yeah, further questions, exactly. I could empathize with you um, and I would probably think that I would need a beer right now if I were you. Okay, let's do that. Thank you, Francesca.